Yeah, except I, th- I think um, we in liberal democracies uh, like to tell the tale <laughs> of um, of equality, and, and it's not entirely a false tale. Uh, but let's be frank, um, uh, some people in democracies have more power than others. Some classes have more power. There's such a thing as a ruling class. Uh, so there, there, are, there are inequalities of power which we try and compensate for in various ways. Uh, but, but even in democracies, even in liberal democracies, uh, some people dominate more than others. Uh, I guess I, re- I regard domination in one form or another as a fact of life, whether within a state or between states. Uh, the, the, the moral demand is uh, to use superior power well rather than badly. Um, but I, I, think, I think dominance is a fact of life. I mean, um, uh, there was a time when, 100 years ago, I guess, when, when the, the Brits dominated the world. Now, until very recently, the Americans did. And uh, my generation and my parents' generation of Brits uh, had to get used to being dominated culturally and, and in other ways by America. I don't regard that as, as wrong. I regard it as a fact of life. And I think, uh, uh, in some respects, um, uh, the U.S. has uh, dominated much better than, than uh, some alternatives. Right. But it's a bit cute, isn't it, to suggest that having to endure <laughs> Seinfeld and American reality television <laughs> is akin to having an army swoop in and take over the machinery of state and reorganize your society. It's, it's only, Josh, it's only cute if you, think, if you think the one word means one thing. It, it, I mean, words mean different things in different contexts. I'm just saying, I guess all I'm, maybe my argument, Josh, is that um, uh, let's stop thinking of domination as referring to one thing only, namely illegitimate oppression. I can refer to a number of things. Uh, including illegitimate oppression. I agree with that. So we have to think about when domination is All right. is unjustified. <laughs> so, for, forgive me for being um, cute. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about the... Yeah, no, of course. Uh, it, it, let's talk specifically about the British Empire then, and I suppose the most obvious example is India. Um, I mean, the, the claim... You know, I noticed when the Queen died, uh, there was a, this provoked a reckoning at my uh, soon-to-be former employer, uh, the public broadcaster here in Australia, between the instinct of the public broadcaster to engage in all of the fawning pomp that one would expect uh, when the monarch dies uh, versus, uh, you know, a generation of younger uh, people, um, predominantly, I would say, Indian Australians and Indigenous Australians who felt really conflicted about what we were celebrating exactly, and that the monarch was a representative of an empire that had systematically bulldozed over their civilizations and steamrolled over the interests of their ancestors and stolen their land and stolen their wealth and imposed its vision of the world upon them and stripped away its resources and on and on and on, right? And I wonder what you make of that critique. Are they misguided? Yes. <laughs> Uh, um, I mean, to describe the, the description you've just given of British Empire is a travesty, frankly. Um, um, I mean, it, it's a travesty which contains elements of truth. Uh, so, so yes, in, sticking to India, uh, there were periods of uh, the British uh, uh, taking control by means of conquest. But let's, let, please, please, let's put this in context. Um, uh, in the past, particularly in the 18th century, which is what we're talking about, um, all sorts of people were conquering other peoples for good reasons and bad reasons, or just because they felt like it. So, so let's let's uh, it, it, if we disapprove of conquest, let's disapprove of it fairly and spread the blame across not just white people or British people, but across all peoples. Um, in the 1820s, the Zulus in South Africa did, did a lot of conquering, and other African peoples didn't appreciate it. Even the Maori have done conquering of their own. So, um, um, you know, we, we live in a very different world, and I think one thing we have to do, Josh, is to imagine a world in conditions very different from ours. And it may puzzle us, it may puzzle us uh, that, that uh, uh, slavery was so widespread uh, up until the uh, 1800s, and even after the 1800s, uh, it may puzzle us that people were such a, so into slavery on every continent, uh, people of every skin colour. Um, but we have to, to, to reckon with that and to figure out why people in the past were 